now running on four bases and it looks like up magic is setting up for something at the six o'clock position there's something over at the at that mineral only expansion and it is indeed a command center going up so the Mutilus Harassment has kept um, Up Magic pinned inside of his base to a degree, but he has managed to um, at least start on this on this uh, third base. And ideally, the Zerg would want to keep the Terran on two. The Terran is still plenty strong on two, but two versus the four that Quanro now has would be very advantageous for um, for the Zerg. Quanro really seems to be committing to this um, this mutilist harassment. He hasn't changed um, his tech up yet, and with increasing numbers of Goliaths on the ground and Valkyries in the air, I think that Quanro is going to hit diminishing returns. He hasn't done any substantial damage in at least a couple of minutes, and with multiple Valkyries in the air and this huge Goliath army, it's not really clear to me when he's actually going to be able in to get into the base and do sufficient damage to um, to up magic. I think before long, up magic is going to have a military advantage. And if he gets that third base up at three bases to four, it's roughly economically even, and Quanro should be able to have um, enough of a military advantage to to start swinging the game in his favor. So it'll be interesting to see how Quanro approaches this. Um, three Valkyries in the air, near to a dozen Goliaths on the ground, and Quanro's got maybe a dozen and a half Mutalisks, um, counting those six or seven that were floating around his base. And okay, now here's the, the start of this uh, transition in tech. So an Evolution Chamber and a Hydralisk Den going down. And that's... Um, going to be the most cost-effective way that he can deal with this huge lot of um, Goliaths on the ground. Um, this is coming, I think, a little bit late. Um, this middleist harassment hasn't been effective for quite some time, and, I'm, and there's another example of that. He's running, I don't think he even managed to get a single SCV while taking a ton of turret shots. So this transition in tech seems to me like it's coming a little bit late. Um, at this point, I think that Up Magic just has the critical mass of anti-air that it's going to be too late for the Mutalisks to be terribly effective, and there just is no ground force to speak of. Quanro is now committing to a big uh, Mutalisk attack at this um, third base of Up Magic, bringing um, Up Magic has brought over his um, Valkyries and Goliaths to chase these Mutalisks off. Um, Five turrets and maybe a couple of SCVs have gotten picked off there, but it seems to me that the SCV casualties in that attack were pretty minimal, so I Magic should be able to recover from that one fairly uh, fairly easily. More turrets going up, and there's a lot of Mutalisks that are now, I believe, plus one carapace upgraded, though the Goliaths are plus one weapons. So that should negate that. Um, Quanero trying to attack again, thinking that perhaps that Up Magic had moved his Valkyries out of there, but the Valkyries are still there to greet those Mutalisks and chase them off. And now it's about a dozen Goliaths on the move, and Quanero must be nervous. There are six sunken colonies on his front door, and I think he knows that he's not going to be able to get a sufficient ground force up in time to stop this. Um, I'm also quite surprised that there wasn't any um, any queen's nest by this point, or any move to transition to hive tech, which would probably help um, would probably help Quanro out a whole lot against this if he could um, survive for long enough to get defilers, for example. Um, Up Magic now scans that nine o'clock base, and he's got a large mech force heading off toward it. Um, my video is glitching out, but I'd have to assume that since there are only about three hydralisks on the ramp, that there's no way that Quanro is going to be able to hold that base. Um, he's committed the mutalisks to stopping those Goliaths, but the Valkyries are now on hand to um, 
severely damage those mutilists and chase them off. And in the meantime, about 10 Goliaths have just completely overrun that base. Now, um, uh, Magic is setting up a fourth base um, at the inside 3 o'clock position, and Quanro set another one up in the top left corner. But if these bases both go up successfully, it's going to be four bases to four. And in that situation, the Terran is going to be at a pretty substantial advantage in that they'll have roughly sim similar economies, though the Terran is going to be um, slightly ahead on that, but the Terran is also going to be able to pump out more, more and more durable units. So Quanro is in trouble, and he's losing a number of Hydralisks trying to escape from his base. And Hydralisks are cost effective in fighting off mass goliaths, but there need to be comparable numbers, and right now um, Up Magic has just far too many goliaths for any number of Hydralisks that Quanro can produce anytime soon to engage directly. So I would expect. In, and indeed, it's beginning to happen. Now there are some tanks coming out, so Up Magic has spotted those sunkens up at the natural, and he is going to um, basically start sieging up and moving in. And typically, this is really where a Zerg would want to have Hive Tech and particularly Defilers around to use Dark Swarm to repel this sort of push. At this point, I think it's just too late for that. Quanro's defensive force of about 15 Hydralis just melting in the face of that siege tank and Goliath fire. And it appeared that Quanro was looking to take a, f sorry, that Up Magic was looking to take a fifth base in the bottom left. And whereas four bases to four is an advantage for Terran, five bases to four is a ludicrous advantage for Terran. Um, a command center getting picked off there by Quanro's Mutilus, but at this point, um, I don't think it's going to matter. There's this huge containment force right outside of the natural, and a dropship is now out. I was expecting to see that about 10 minutes ago in the opening of the game, but um, that's going to chase all those drones away from that expansion, rendering that useless for a little while. And Up Magic is just cementing his advantage. Some more creep colonies are going up in the back of that sunken line to stall this push for a bit longer. And in the meantime, these Goliaths and this this is dropship with a bunch of Goliaths just being really annoying, dropping everywhere and just giving Quanro too much to deal with. I don't think that Quanro has the production capacity or the micromanagement um, ability at the moment to just deal with all of these attacks that Quanro is throwing that um, Up Magic is throwing at him. Um, this ground push on the natural expansion, though, is clearly the most important one, but I don't see how he can possibly hold the line. Um, these Goliaths are now just starting to A-move in. There are two Sunkens left. Those are going to fall any minute now. And there just don't seem to be enough units for Quanro available to stop this push at all. Um, Up Magic has about double the amount of Goliaths as um, Quanro had Hydralis at the beginning of that attack, and is just continuing to pick off drones at expansions and be everywhere. A number of Quanro's expansions just empty and not mining, and this has to be GG very soon. The natural has fallen, and CJ Gangu, aka Quanro, GG's. So that was a pretty good game. Um, Solidly played by Up Magic, I have to say. I think that um, Quanro made a couple of um, a couple of errors. Um, the first of those, I think, is that he overcommitted to um, to his Mutalisk play, and his tech switch out of Mutalisk and into a ground force of Hydralisks came too late. Um, like I said, he really committed to that Mutalisk harassment, going so far even as to get one-one upgrades on his Mutalisks. Um, but when that harass didn't work out, he wasn't able to adapt really well. GG.